Swami Brahmadev Ji is the founder of Oro Valley Ashram, which is an international center for inner ecology and spiritual studies situated at the foothills of Himalayas in Dehradun, Uttarakhand. After having graduated from a law school and obtaining a degree in economics, he traveled the Himalayas in the quest of truth. He has also traveled across the entire country and is well acquainted with the diversity of our nation. After having searched everywhere, he found his answers in the teachings of Sri Aurobindo and the mother. I welcome you, sir, to please grace us with your pious thoughts on this issue. Namaste. Thank you for this opportunity. It's a pleasure to share some thoughts. Actually, I still not able to understand what is religion, what is spirituality, and what is all this mystery of life. Only I have some fire inside me burning to know. And with that, the journey of my life is still going on. Actually, life is the most important subject. And now a little bit, but I can say I am able to understand that it is a process of uh, divine manifestation everywhere in everything. And we are also a part of it. Every seed has his own process of evolution journey. And according to that, things are happening and everything is moving. I started with my ignorance, with my confusion, what to do with this life and how to live it. And then a process started, a search started, and in that search, so many experiences, so many up downs, so many kind of uh, hard, soft, good, bad things happened. And through all that process, always something is becoming clear, always something becoming more and more, bringing me more and more near to myself. And uh, there was a time when I was knowing what to do with this life, how to, what to do, and what for I live. And then a journey started. In Indian tradition, in which family we grow, born, always from the childhood we are listening that if you have something like uh, inner, this kind of feelings that uh, who am I, why I am here, what for this life, and mostly this information they feed in us that go to the Himalaya, go to the caves, and do tapasya, and then God will come to you and ask you <laughs> what you want. So that way, a journey started. I went to many, many places, like um, without knowing what to do. So then you will go to the ashrams and temples and all these things. So all, everywhere, all those experiences of temples and uh, these uh, ashrams, they gave something. They gave some information, but clarity not came. The inner was not satisfied with that. So many religious things, so many rituals, so many kind of uh, uh, very beautiful things. But the inner satisfaction was not there with that. But inner aspiration was very strong. And then in those days, I remember that 
a very like a su super frustration, super miserable situation. Sometimes it looks like what for we are living better to finish this life and liberate, get rid from it. And with this kind of inner feelings and thoughts, one day I came in contact with one person and I asked him that, please, I have no place to live, what to do with this life, if you have any, if you can help me, if you can do something. So he said, okay, I'll take you one place and you can see if they, that they can help you or they can keep you there. So that was the mother and Sri ashram in Haridwar. And uh, there I first time come in contact with mother's Sri picture and their literature, some words. And I don't know what happened with that. Immediately something, the whole, whole being start dancing with that, start feeling peace with that and start feeling that like you discover something, like you, you find what you was looking for. And from there, the inner journey started. A journey started, and in that journey, always, always, when I was reading Mother Shirvindo, and every time, more clarities, more clarities, more clarities, and inner start feeling peaceful, joyful, blissful. I don't know it is a religion or it is a spirituality, but I start, find that this is the meaning of my life, this is the purpose of the life, and now life is only for, for the divine. And actually, in the deep, in my heart, I was, start, I, I was feeling that I am in love, love. It is like a love awakens, love opens, and this love is for the mother, for Sri Aurobindo. And with that love, things start happening. I went to Pondicherry. First time I come in contact with this uh, Auroville, the mother's dream of Auroville. That dream of our will make me mad that I start feeling that how this kind of thing should be somewhere in the Himalaya near Ganges. And then another journey started to make a place like our will in the Himalaya. And I don't know what was the what was this madness but slowly slowly this madness also become clear that this is not my madness this is something with some very clear visions and very clear inner feelings that this is mother's work mother's dream mother wants something and mother i always start feeling that mother is always with me She's always with, 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 with me and, and she's like, a, it's like a guiding you, showing you, asking you, speaking with you, everything like a, without no any doubt and no any duality in anything. And with that aspiration to find a place and we started this, our valley. And Aruvali is a laboratory where life is preparing you, preparing you for, for work, preparing you for manifestation. And now, for me, religion and spirituality and everything is a mother. She is my religion, she is my spirituality, she is my life. So I never get confused myself, I never confuse myself with this, that I, I am religious or I am a spiritual or I am naive, I just, I am a child of the mother and she is doing her work and how all the times 
be with the mothers, remember the mothers, offer everything all to the mothers. And in this process, it is not a very easy, like everything is happening very easily. It is a real, real, real Mahabharata. And when we use this word of Mother Sri Aurobindo's integral yoga, integral yoga is a real inner and outer Mahabharata. When you face so many situations, because we have to live in this world of falsehood, in this world where nothing is so simple and easy, where everything, for everything you have to, you have to fight, you have to work hard, you have to face situations, you have to meet all kinds of things. And in that moment, one thing becomes clear that with the contact of the mother, always in my intentions, the only mother exists. Always in all the movements of life, mother is there sitting. And all the movements of life with mother start making everything possible. And it is surprising that how just only with simple with that, put the mother in your intentions and live with that. That is integral yoga for me. And that is my spirituality. That is the secret of all the religions also, spirituality also, that keep the divine in you, keep the divine in your intentions, because life is a movement, always movements, and all the movements without, all the movements, they are carrying some intentions, and if the divine is in those intentions, if the mother is in those intentions, then they know what they want to do with this life. And that way, slowly, 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 things start happening. The whole world start coming to our valley without any propaganda, without any it's just a mouth-to-mouth -mouth contact and life start taking me everywhere for mother's work. And the thing is, till now, the Mahabharata is continued. There is no any end of this process. And this is the beauty of Integral Yoga, that it is a constant, unending process. There is no any full stop in it. Every day with the new, with something new is waiting for you to face. Hard, soft, good, bad, all. And that is the joy of this. And with that joy, mother's work, divine work, and now is going on and and the thing is that now the only thing which is important for me to always keep your intentions very 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 pure very very good because intentions carries your attitude and your attitude is creating all the possibilities and if we can check all the times our attitude and our intentions and we can feed consciously in our intentions and attitudes what really is clear in you then nothing is impossible one can make everything possible and that way Aravali is growing, my spirituality is growing, my life is, is uh, moving and living and, and, uh, and the one thing more, that uh, integral yoga gives us 
the meaning of life and integral yoga give a, an opportunity for everyone, those who want to live this life. Because there is a saying that one in millions lives. And if one in millions lives, then what we are doing it? So many people, what they are doing it? So, Mother Sri they change the mode of our life. They put us in the living mode. They liberate us from the surviving mode. In surviving mode, life prepares, but it is a long way, long journey. But in living mode, one, when one is living, then everything starts unfolding automatically. In living mode, the process of manifestation becomes more fast. The life is a progressive, it is a progressive manifestation of the divine in matter, in us, in everything. So in living mode, this process, the speed of the process of our evolution change, becomes better. And that way, this is the grace, this is the blessing, this is the work which mother, mothers love, they do it. They put our life in the living mode. They liberate us from all kind of worries and hurries and all kind of uh, thinking of uh, what will happen to me and how I will live and how I will, what will do with me. So with living mode, they give us wisdom and freedom and in that freedom things happens. And once life starts living with wisdom, that is the, you can say, is the nature of spirituality. Spirituality grows with wisdom. Life can grow only with wisdom. And that wisdom comes when one is connected with oneself or when one is in the hands of some higher forces, those who connect you with yourself and liberate you from all that darkness, ignorance, whatever, and give you the wisdom. And with that wisdom, when one lives, one never feel lack of anything. One never miss anything. One never feel lonely. One never feel that one is alone. And that is spirituality for me. That is my religion. That is my spirituality. That is my everything. All is divine and all is for the divine. And slowly, slowly, this kind of clarity, this kind of vision starts growing. And it is so easy to face the life, to meet the life, to face situations. And that is my little bit understanding about Sri Ravindo's mothers, about religion, about spirituality. So, for me, how to, all the times, remember the mother, remember the divine, and offer everything to them, and just live with emptiness, live without any planning and any kind of uh, ideas or any kind of thing, just always empty in front of them and they are doing everything through this process, through this box. And uh, now in our valley, people are coming here from everywhere. We not teach here anything. We not even try to do here anything, but things happen. And this Aravali uh, is a school of learning actually. And here learning is 
one is learning, when one is here, we give them atmosphere, environment, and I tell them, you live with yourself and learn from your living. The real, real knowledge which comes, that comes from our own, when we start living with our own experiences and learn from living is the idea, is the, is the purpose of uh, our valley. Come here, live here and life will unfold and give you all the knowledge of you and just exist with that, live with that. Now the thing is that in this process, automatically the level of understanding, the level of consciousness, the level of knowledge, the level of awareness, they automatically slowly, 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 slowly becoming better and that gives joy, that gives peace, that gives bliss and that bliss is also for the <laughs> for the mother, that everything is only for the happiness of the mother, for the... So, and that way... I'm living, and that is a little bit what I know about spirituality and life and me, I... Uh, told you, If anybody has any questions, we can speak about that. Thank you so much, Swamiji, for sharing your life journey with us and telling us how the teaching of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother transformed your life. You also told us and emphasized upon the fact that uh, religion, spirituality, or any other thing is uh, a manifestation of the Mother for you, and that you pro uh, and, and in that you emphasized that one should offer everything to the divine, your all actions, all expectations, all result, and then uh, you, you will always have the power to go forward. Uh, you also said that uh, to keep the in, uh, intention pure was the idea. But I would like to ask you one thing that uh, suppose I am doing all of this, but uh, the other person or the other community starts behaving in a way that your existence is all bogus and you need to be killed. And in, in, in such a situation, what is the course that one can take uh, to save one's own self? And I'm talking this on a very physical plane, you know, like how to save myself in this physical realm in such a scenario. The first thing is that uh... One should have a patience, lots of patience. And not in a hurry, not with the impulse to just uh, react immediately. Control on your reactions. And with full patience and full faith in the divine in you. You know, in our tradition, we learned that always you see in our, all, all gods, they carry in both hands. In one hand, they carry the flowers, in the other hand, they carry the weapons. So, according to the need of the time and situations, use. Don't be attached with the violence or non-violence. Whatever is needed, according to that, get ready to face everything, face all the situations with that. So, religion and spirituality is not the spirituality, is not the, we learn from the, Lord Krishna that uh, you should be ready to face the life with <coughs> Not to like um, uh, not to become a punsak. That moment you see that the Krishna said to the Arjuna, please don't become a punsak. Hmm? So, if anything which which is uh, you feel you think that is uh, is uh, against anything, one should be ready to face that to reply that. For me, violence, non-violence, both are equally important. Well, so, because I told you, it is, I'm fighting here, I'm in the Mahabharata from many years. 
ट्वेंटी फोर अवर्स इवन टिल नौ इन सैड महाभारत औट सैड महाभारत वि आर् लिविंग इन असुराज इन इन आलवेज एव्री वे आर अरउंड सेलफिश पीपल ग्रीडी पीपल एंड सो मेनी थिंग्स आर देर अरउंड सो वी आर नाट लिविंग लाइक ए काउस टू ओके कम एंड डू वट एवर सो always face them with your sincerity with your good heart with your for the goodness of everything and life life will give you courage and everything and things will handle and that is from the very beginning we see that how this fighting is going on from so many years it is not it is a new thing from the beginning things are happening like that so <clears throat> but not to like a, not very much uh, the thing is that few things makes us weak one is our ego and the other is our selfish greediness so whenever you are in the mahabharata liberate yourself from your ego not ego should fight and not neither your selfish motive behind is fighting you are fighting for the truth you are fighting for a good cause so that way everything is fear in that okay ji thank you so much swami ji and another question i would uh, like to ask moving forward that uh, uh it is a very good thing that you said but uh, do you also see a possibility that uh, these conflicts uh any possibility that they will end in our own lifetimes or maybe in a century or maybe In 150 years or so. The, Any possibility of these? The divine designed this game without any full stop. This it is a journey towards in, infinity, and everything is a part of the process of evolution. Because we have a very limited knowledge to understand many things, we have very limited consciousness to understand many things. We always want the things should happen the way we want. but the divine is very intelligent nature is very intelligent they are doing their work perfectly so i think we are moving towards betterment and end is very good and end means that uh, that we are moving towards according to evolution according to mother shivindo towards perfection towards betterment so let us hope for the best and the thing is the thing is that uh, yes when we see things outside which we not want and the, the other thing is that the negativity is so strong in us but the other side is we have positivity also inside us how we see with our positive eyes all the negativity outside when you start seeing with your full with your better consciousness with your positiveness outside to all the negativity then negativity will disappear so sometime it is our lack of understanding or lack of uh, consciousness or lack of seeing the things which create something big things outside so the fault is always inside us fault is never outside fault is in my vision fault is in my understanding fault is in my seeing how i relating the things how i am seeing the things so there are big big powers in our positiveness the sunlight burns all the darkness in seconds so the positiveness in human being is also our spirituality is also something a big fire biggest big sun in and once this sun will more and more become <coughs> more automatically this darkness will disappear and uh, one more thing that uh, you said that uh, everything is moving towards uh, evolution and we are constantly evolving so uh, in your view do you see that we have evolved so far and that uh, conflicts though rampant and happening all across have uh uh it decreased in their magnitude like they ha- used to happen before and like they are uh, happening now there is a significant decrease in the magnitude of such conflict 
I think things are becoming better. We are moving toward betterment. And because of the media now, when we see the news and media and all these things, then we think that the things are growing more and more. But the things from the very beginning, are, there was a period when this, there were much more, if you see the history, there was much more conflict, much more <coughs> bad period was there. But if we compare, this period is much more better. Life is becoming better. The world is becoming spiritual. world is purifying. The world is becoming much, much better. If we stop seeing media and news and all these things, one month, don't see any media and don't look any news. And everything, everything will, you will feel that everything is normal. But now we do not know how to listen, how to see the news, how to react. So then what happens if a little bit news comes and break our balance and we start feeling, thinking that, oh, it is horrible, word is horrible, things are happening horrible. But the other thing is, this is a period of transformation. The new forces, what Mother Shivindo described, those forces, they are very active. It is same like when you clean your room, Sometimes we clean our room, so so many dust comes out, so many dust start, you know, with when you broom your room, all the dust start crying, start coming up. So it is, it is like that. Now many forces, many active, and they know that how things are transforming, changing, and those who are not want to change, those, they are, they are, they are making noise. They are doing all kind of... Uh, things but but this all is for the betterment all is for the good this is a beauty of uh, 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 i think this is the golden period of on earth because now is a big hope that world is becoming better and there will be a paradise or a divine life on this earth and that message gave mother shrivindo and we should be we should with patience, cooperate and collaborate with this. Thank you so much, Swamiji, for uh, such positive note on uh, these uh, on the idea of these conflicts. And we hope that things become better and better with time. I would like to ask our participants if they have any questions, they can come forward and. Ask. This is Neelima. Namaste Swamiji, Namaste. so nice to see you after so long. I was reminded of uh, sitting in the satsang in Oro Valley and listening to you answer questions and your incredible ability to simplify all these big, difficult scriptural knowledge and reminding us that when we are looking at the conflict in religion, to go to the Mahabharata and the Gita to say you're here to fight the good fight the Dharma Yud. So my question to you is, can you give us an example of how you have had to fight a Dharma Yud? Uh, give us a, a real example. I would love to hear. I started with my madness, with my aspiration, with this that there one day, uh, with this that uh, there should be a Aruvil, Aruvali in Himalaya. And you just imagine those days, I was not having even, uh, uh, even a place to live. I was asking to, one day I asked to the, to the divine, oh, uh, please, if you give me one potato, that was the period when there was nothing was there to stay, even not to eat or anything. And, but there was a fire which was taking everywhere. So in those process, in, th in that time, and this aspiration that to make a place like Yaroville, and now things start happening and we got the place and everything and all these things. And now I told you, we are living in a system of uh, falsehood. In that system of falsehood, nobody understand your feelings, nobody understand your vision, even the government, they have very limited visions. They have, they cannot understand that uh, we, uh, there should be somewhere like Yaruvil. Or, they're not able to understand what is mother's vision and all. So now in that situation, when you have a big land for this, okay, land came. So now land came 
then then you have to face situation with the land mafias government is also a mafia so all this with all those when you start facing them then in that mahabharata you know you feel very clearly that how the nature the mother is preparing you it is a preparation period before i was thinking that it is a big problem oh it is a oh, big some something but slowly slowly whenever any hard situation problem comes before i was having a different attitude or feelings to face them and now i feel that this is not a problem this is another opportunity god is giving to learn to grow something to and that way always till today facing situations facing problems some so so it it is it is an endless process and i think now mahabharata is not a mahabharata it is a process of the evolution it is a process of uh, our journey it is a process of manifestation it is a process of 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 uh, our progress so mahabharata with what attitude you face mahabharata with the fighting attitude mahabharata with a playful attitude so when we face the mahabharata with a playful attitude it becomes a game it's a play it's a lead. and when we face the mahabharata with a fighting attitude that it becomes a battle so in battle the things are hard situ but in the playful attitude things are just it is a play so i think in life life is constantly a mahabharata and mahabharata should be always there because beauty of mahabharata is the more mahabharata the more inner knowledge comes out it is the mahabharata give which give birth to the gita if there is no mahabharata the gita never came out so when inner mahabharata starts the inner knowledge of life starts coming and that clarity make you strong and give you courage strength everything grow your faith confidence trust and one able to face everything easily uh, swami ji pranam uh, uh, apne you uh, very lucidly nicely mentioned about surviving mode and uh, living mode and what i believe that we should try to allah may not reach that living mode but we should try for that living mode and there also you mentioned about we should learn for that living mode which ultimately leads to wisdom and spirituality so i have just uh, i am curious to know what can the different uh, sources for those learning the sources of learning is actually uh, your sincerity your aspiration is a source in living mode the inner growth starts in living mode one is more mo- living inward moving inward in surviving mode we are always outside in living in surviving mode one is always progressing outward outside in surviving mode you can become a very rich person your name fame everything you can have many 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 things but in living mode your inner grows your inner becomes vast in living mode the inner development inner growth that happens and we have to live with the inner growth and with that inner growth when you comes out in the world then outer problems outer things they looks very very little very very small then nothing disturbs you and nothing breaks your balance so and the how to change the mode for that either it is divine grace either you learn from the observations either you learn from the learn from your life experiences and that way one can change the mode of life okay so thank you so much swami ji for again for giving us such wide words of wisdom and the important message that one should always remain playful and joyful in this uh, and unattached in this mahabharata of life 